I've always been obsessed with information. When I was a kid, I remember even then being obsessed. Whenever my parents or my siblings were having a conversation, eight-year-old me would immediately start asking questions. Who are you talking about? Why? Where did you hear that? What difference does that make? What happens next? It would get so annoying that my sister would say to me, are you writing a book? I wasn't. I was just interested in information. I like to know things. A few years later, the internet came along, and I spent a lot of time surfing the web, reading articles, blogging, and learning how to code on web pages. Probably too much time, to be honest. I became obsessed all over again with the idea of instant information. It was readily available everywhere. The good, the bad, and the bizarre. I devoured it. I dare say that people probably thought I was becoming the internet at that point. Fast forward a few years, and that obsession with how I and others use technology to get information led me to my master's program in library and information science. I've been an information professional for several years now, and I am gloriously surrounded by the internet. There's a lot of news out there on the, uh, the web, and I have a daily news ritual. So the first thing I do when I get up in the morning is I grab a cup of coffee and I immediately search the news, either on my desktop or my phone. I see things about celebrities, uh, na the government, national disasters, and I still follow the oddities for fun. There's a lot of news out there, and it's gotten much, much harder to tell what is real from what is not real. The constant stream of information that we're assaulted with on a daily basis, some of it blatantly false, and some of it convincingly false, makes understanding what real news is more important than at any other time in history. So when I say fake news, I want to make sure you understand what I mean. Fake news comes in a few varieties, and I want to be clear what I'm talking about. Tabloid news, like the National Enquirer, and satirical news, like The Onion, have been around a while, some as long as 50 years. Tabloids host sensational stories about celebrities, oddities, and sometimes complete fiction. Satirical news presents pop culture in a comedic way, and it's often a commentary on social issues. This isn't the kind of fake news that dominates our discourse these days, however. I'm talking about the spreading of false information as fact, either deliberately misleading or not, that gets shared by people on the internet, be it by retweets, bloggers, Facebook posts, or any of the other ways that people share information. How do we know that this is causing a problem? In a recent study by the Stanford History Education Group, which looked at middle and high school students, 80% of middle school students couldn't tell the difference between real and fake news. High school students accepted photographic evidence of a supposed Fukushima radiation effect on daisies, which caused them to mutate in a way that's unnatural, without asking any questions about the image. What evidence in the image is there that this was caused by nuclear radiation, aside from the poster's comments? Can we believe what we see is real in the age of Photoshop? A study by researchers at the University of Warwick found that people have a poor ability to identify when a real-world image is original or has been manipulated. What about sponsored content? Those are articles that are essentially elaborate infomercials in the form of news. Students couldn't tell the difference between sponsored content and real news either, according to the Stanford History Education Study. This problem isn't just affecting our students, though. Many adults are struggling with the same problems. Many of us were never taught how to evaluate information sources. And so in an age of digital news, we're finding ourselves bamboozled by it as well. Researchers at Duquesne University conducted a study that assessed adult students' educational ability at understanding information sources and found them to be weak, which they theorized would lead to problems for adults because many of us turn to the internet for information. Why is this important to know? Because fake news has real-world consequences. In May 2017, false news reports began to appear on Facebook, stating that South Sudanese President Salva Kiir had been shot dead. Then, another news story appeared saying that a militia loyal to a removed army chief were withdrawing and assembling in a city. Chaos erupted in South Sudan. Digital bigotry and incitement were uh, accompanied by targeted killings and rapes of members of ethnic groups. 
a special advisor to the United Nations, pointed out in a Slate magazine article that violent attacks against individuals and communities based on political affiliation could be linked back to these false news reports. This is not just an isolated incident. This is happening everywhere. Fake news is like wildfire, and it's spreading. Sometimes, it can be really hard to think of ways to deal with problems on a global scale. When I was first approaching the idea of this talk, I remember being overwhelmed by how big of a problem this really is. And someone told me, I should try to remember that planting seeds leads to growth, and that actions I take can ripple outward. Small actions can become large over time. And it occurred to me, the same is true about how we fight fake news. We start with ourselves. One thing we need to consider is how we react to news. It can be easy in a politically charged climate to have an immediate gut reaction to something that we see online. After all, it's widely known that people can be swayed by their emotions. So instead of hitting that share button in fury, agitation, or astonishment, we should ask ourselves three things. First, ask yourself, who is the author of the article you're looking at? One of the easiest ways to identify fake news is by doing research on the author. You're looking to see what articles they've written, what other publications they have, and anything about them personally. Well-known journalists often have Twitter feeds, regular publications, and easily findable information about themselves out there. If you can't find anything about the author, chances are they're not a real person, or they're deliberately misleading the public by providing a fake name. Be skeptical of authors that have no public information. Next, you should ask yourself, where did this article come from? On today's World Wide Web, anyone can host a publication. Some publications are easily identifiable. Things like the New York Times, The Post, and even CNN are easily recognizable names. Many articles say where they came from, but how often have you stopped to click through and look at the original article for yourself? Go back to the original article and take a good look at it. Does it have obvious problems? Sometimes we can see things immediately, like misspelled words or bad grammar. Even doing a simple Google search for the article can tell you more about it. You should click on the articles and actually make sure they work. This is the Denver Guardian. In November 2016, the website published a story about Hillary Clinton that was widely shared by Facebook users. This is fake news. Clicking anywhere but on the, site in on the article in question would tell you that they were experiencing technical issues with their website. Remember the double daisy image earlier? We can't always believe our own eyes, so you have to do more than just look at it. Poke around, read the About Us page, read other articles. Even a simple Google search for the name of the publication can kind of lend you more information about the authenticity of the article. This leads us to our final question. Is this article credible? What does it mean to be credible? Credibility is the quality of being trusted or believed in. And with fake news, it requires a synthesis of the first two questions. Who is the author and where did the article come from? Into a final answer of trustworthiness for the entire article. This step is usually the easiest. You already know who the author is and whether they're credible as writers. And you know something about the publisher. So now you decide if you feel like this is a trustworthy news source. If it is, that's great. If it isn't, then congratulations. You've just potentially identified a fake news story for yourself. Remember that headlines are meant to grab your attention and to inflame your passions in the hopes that you will read it and maybe even share it. Don't react, research. Ask yourself these three questions before you blindly share an article and contribute to the fake news problem. Each article we review is one less instance of fake news, and actions can ripple. So the next time that you're on social media and you feel the urge to share an article, ask yourself where the article came from, who wrote it, and why. And we can all help stem the tide of fake news, one article at a time. Thank you. Thank you.